Young gun Alex Drake and the Omaha Heart come into Los Angeles to battle Ashley Salerno and her Los Angeles temptation. Next on LFL Football Night. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f shit out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. LFL football night has arrived to Tinseltown, Los Angeles, California. Welcome inside the booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. We are in Tinseltown, Los Angeles, California, and we're going to get our first look at the Los Angeles temptation, notably two big roster changes. One, the return of Ashley Salerno, and then the retirement of Monique Gaxiola. This is a proud franchise. If you look up top there, there's three championship banners hanging there. The Hall of Famer, Mo Gaxiel, was a big part of that. For the first time ever, she'll be in street clothes tonight. I don't think she's going to like that, but she is going to be sorely missed. Yeah, and on the offensive side of the ball, we talked about Ashley Salerno, arguably the greatest quarterback in league history, coming off a suspension from the 2016 season. Is she the final missing piece to put a fourth banner in this building? Maybe. If she comes back like the old Ashley Salerno, yes. But the concern was, with a year off, how is she in shape? Is she in shape? We don't know. I asked her. She's been training for the MMA all year long. She's in the top shape of her life. Anytime you have number eight behind the center and she's in that kind of condition, you have a pretty good chance of winning. Now let's talk about their opponent, the Omaha Heart, coming off a very impressive win at home, 32-6 to over the Pittsburgh Rebellion. And I reiterate the Pittsburgh Rebellion. That's an expansion team. Are you buying into the headlines that Omaha is back? For their morale, yes. They got a win, but you're right. It was against an expansion team, Pittsburgh. I'm not sure how good Pittsburgh was. We'll find out as the year develops. But as for Omaha, their quarterback, Alex Drake, in her second year, is not up to where we thought she'd be. Technique-wise, if you compare her with Salerno, her footwork, her accuracy, just not there. To have any shot tonight against L.A., she has to have a big game. We'll be interesting to find out if Alex Drake and the Omaha Heart are for real. It's time to lace them up. The Los Angeles Temptation hosting the Omaha Heart. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night. In Ontario, California, Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco, and our first look at the Los Angeles Temptation. It's all about the quarterbacks tonight for Los Angeles. The superstar coming back, Ashley Salerno, but more importantly, the young gun for Omaha, Alex Drake. Can she compete against his talented LA defense? That is Lily Granston getting us underway. A nice high deep kick. That'll be fielded by Ariana Williams. I am not certain why Williams brought that out. That'll back Omaha up inside their own five-yard line. The up back, Macy and Sarah, she thought Williams was going to stay in the end zone. She did not block, and she got stopped inside the red zone. Wow, what a bad start for Omaha. Alex Drake, the second-year quarterback, will get the start tonight for Omaha. And we sat down with her earlier. We had a great first win. Our confidence went up, but our record tonight is 0-0. This game's going to make or break our season. It really will. To have any shot to play us, they have to beat the big guys like Los Angeles. She has to perform at her best tonight. That is Drake under center. Handoff to Jamie Lundberg. A great open field tackle by Rachel Hayes. Now we meet the starters for Omaha. Raina Holabar, running back. Jamie Lundberg, wide receiver. Danielle Snyder, tight end. Sarah Jane Thompson, your tight end. Sarah Robinson, your center. Nikki Bernhardt, running back. Alex Drake, your quarterback. Running back, Shalyn Dorham, she has to step up tonight to help out quarterback Drake. And that is who gets the rock. Stopped by the fourth year corner, Chelsea Hart. Shalyn Dorham will look to get a lot of the load, as you said. Nikki Bernhardt, who's their ace, did not make the trip. 
Gorham can play. She's got a strong leg drive. I really think she'll be able to play. I hope they can mix it up with the passing game and the running game to keep these guys on track. Chelsea Hart in this defense will test the Omaha offense tonight. Hart, a fifth year all fantasy corner. Omaha's up against the third and seven. Another handoff to Durham gets burled along the back wall as we meet the starters for LA. Suzanne Mapes, defensive end. Lily Grayson, free safety. Agam Chichindu, lockdown corner. Ty Emery, strong safety. Chelsea Hart, cornerback. Megan Hansen, defensive end. With the retirement of Hall of Fame linebacker Mo Gaxiola, the question tonight for LA's defense is can Megan Hansen, number 17, fill her shoes? Break from the shotgun, looking over the middle, had a receiver. That was Lindsey Howe wide open with a crossing pattern nowhere near her. Break completely inaccurate on that pass. Wide open, should have been at first down for Omaha. Bad pass by Drake. We'll get our first call of the night by head referee Jeremy Hewick. Penalty goes against Omaha. That'll be declined. And how about this field position for Los Angeles at the Omaha 9? We sat down with Ashley Salerno earlier. Just coming back to this team, I feel like I was pretty respected um, from the rookies, which is really nice because I feel like the years I played in the past, a lot of, I mean, I felt like I, you know, did a lot to earn my stripes. As you can see there, she can throw the home run football deep, but she also is one of the top running quarterbacks in the league. A first and goal, as I said, from the nine of Omaha. That is Delaney Hall in motion. Handoff, Carmen Borso. And the F-150 getting into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. That's like trying to wrestle a tornado. Borso, she is back just like Salerno. What a backfield, what a start for LA. Untouched almost, great blocking by LA. Borso signed from the Las Vegas Sin two seasons ago and has been a huge part of this L.A. running attack. That Omaha defense didn't look like they wanted to touch Borso. Jalen Dorham had a shot coming up from the defensive backfield, but she kind of backed off, let her get, and she let her walk in the end zone. And if you're wondering, Carmen Borso is about 170 pounds of pure muscle. That is probably why Durham didn't want anything to do with her. But look at this open field tackle, Sarah Jane Thompson stopping Ashley Salerno. Years previous, we've seen Salerno lower her shoulder. And here, it appears she may be hurt here. That's not good at all. It looks like she got kneed in the back, and she had back problems before. I hope this is not serious. Give some credit to Thompson, though. We've all seen the viral clips of number eight laying out defenders at the goal line. She challenged Salerno and stopped her on the conversion. The score will remain six to nothing Los Angeles. Great play by Thompson, one-on-one, -on -one bringing Salerno down, but that is a coach's nightmare. Her first series back, Ashley Salerno walking off the field limping. You can see Omaha players running off the field and looking at their play cards. They do not look very well prepared for tonight early at least. This is Drake in the pocket. Nothing there. And that is Megan Hansen, the dark angel. As you said earlier, Bob, she is filling in Monique Gaxiola's role. She's a difference maker, but Alex Drake again, she looks like she sees ghosts in the pocket. She had protection for the second time. She didn't have to run. She had people down the field. She missed a wide open receiver her first chance. Not a good play by Drake. A loss of six yards on that sack. Omaha just cannot get the ball on the other side of the 10-yard line even. It's got to be intimidating for this whole team, and you got a second-year quarterback who's new to Omaha coming into this snake pit in Los Angeles. This crowd is going crazy. A second down play, Naja Christmas. Hello, Christmas off the edge. Gave Drake no opportunity, and you could see our O-line just picking Drake up off the ground. LA's defense is in that full attack mode right now. Coach Sui and Noah, he said he's gonna blitz the young quarterback. Both defensive ends, Hayes and Christmas, were all over. And why not test the young, unproven quarterback, Alex Drake? 
especially with the athletes that Los Angeles has on that side of the football. And even though on paper she looks like a quarterback, she has the stature, has the arm, she was only one out of eight against Pittsburgh. This Omaha offense has really put a focus on the ground game. That's where they're going to go here again to Durham. And again, number 17, Megan Hansen and Lily Granston combine on the tackle. Lily Granston, she will attack from that safety position. In fact, without any threat at all, going deep passing, she's tucked up in the box and she's exploding up to make tackles from free safety. This Omaha offense has got to get this ball down the field. This is a key fourth down. If they turn it over again, it is going to be tough against that Los Angeles offense. That offense is one of the best ever. You're right. This is a key play for Drake. She has to get first down yardage. A fourth down Drake in the shotgun. Looking to the right side has another receiver complete. That is going to be well short. Complete to Reina Holobar. They needed about 11 yards. They got six. Not a great play selection. The pass looked good, a completion, but that secondary will give that to him all night. Fourth and 11, they only get six. You could see things getting a little chippy down there. That looked to be Agam Chichindu and Halibar getting into it. Los Angeles getting on the board early behind the play of Megan Hansen. Back to LFL football night. A game that Los Angeles is up early, six to nothing. And once again on the doorstep. L.A. has a short field for the second time in a row. They're inside the 20. So Leonard was going to love this. A first and 10 pass intended for Kiana Takarangi. That'll fall incomplete. Takarangi, part of a great offense. Let's meet the starters. Kiana Takarangi, wide receiver. Cynthia Schmidt, wide receiver. Sherry Awaga, tight end. Quincy Hewitt, tight end. Megan Hansen, center. We spoke enough about Salerno, but she has two top receivers, two of the best, Delaney Hall and Cynthia Schmidt to go to tonight. It will stay on the ground, and look at the F-150. That is her second score of the night and the second score of the quarter. I didn't think the F-150 had that kind of gas. She told us before the game she took a year off to heal up, get that body. She runs hard. She looks 1 million percent tonight. Again, great blocking up front and outside. Nobody trying to stop her. Not a single defender laid a hand on Carmen Borso. And I got to go back to that open field speed. I've never seen that from number 10. Again, she came in top shape this season, right there at that open field speed to go along with that power. Watch out for her tonight. That was the extra point attempt falling short intended for Sherry Owaga. That's two failed extra point conversions for Los Angeles. That'll keep our score to 12 to nothing. Salerno took some heat right there. That offensive line let him sieve through. She had a throw quick, another bad throw. Salerno not starting off hot. Obviously had a year off in 2016. We'll see how much that impacts her. LA's defense back out on the field. Defense that has not given up much to this Omaha offense early. Agam Chichindu back in action again. The biggest trash talk in her league. I love watching her play. Break under center. It looks to be almost a wishbone set. Look at the tackle by Chichindu. You If trash talking were music, Agam would have her own orchestra. I love watching her play football. She gets a lot of press for not only just the trash talking, but she is regarded as the dirtiest player in the game, although that looked like a pretty good tackle to me. She's got talent. She talks trash, but she backs it up. A lot of people can't back it up. She can. A three-yard gain on that previous play, setting up a second down handoff, this time a keeper. With Alex Drake, she'll fall forward. With that size, she'll pick up six yards. She's a strong quarterback. She has the ability to run. I just wish they would open it up a little bit more, get that secondary opened up, try them deep so that safety don't come up that quick. That has been one of the knocks early against offensive coordinator Dante Allen of Omaha. He, he's really not opened up this offense and allowed number 16 to get comfortable. 
she has one of the strongest arms in the game, but he's not allowing her to throw it down the field. Break from the shotgun. In fact, looking down the field, had a receiver. That was Jamie Lundberg. It looked like she was turning in, and that ball went out. Again, Drake had heavy pressure. She got rid of the ball, but she didn't lead enough. Lundberg, even though it was behind her, in a game like this, you have to make that catch. Catch the football, and then don't worry about running. Just catch it. Decent throw by Drake. Should have been a big play for Omaha. That incomplete now setting up another fourth down for this offense. An offense has, that has not been on the Los Angeles side of the field throughout this entire first quarter. A fourth and seven. Drake trying to evade the rush and takes a blow to the head. Ball sails well out of bounds. And guess what? Los Angeles taking over again, this time at the 18-yard line. A delayed corner blitz by Agam Chichindu. Heavy pressure on Drake, but she threw that ball up in the stands. You have to at least give your receivers a chance to get it on fourth down. Now, I know she had pressure, but again, not a great play by Drake. And you got to start feeling for this Omaha defense. This is now the third possession that they've had to guard on average a 12 yard field. And actually Salerno is not even hot yet. Just wait till she heats up. Speaking of Salerno to the end zone had a receiver. That is Cynthia Schmidt. Touchdown Los Angeles. What a pass by Ashley Salerno. She threw this ball before Schmidt was at the defensive back. And Shaylin Dorham stopped running and let Schmidt get behind her. Great play by Schmidt. Great pass by Salerno. L.A. is rolling right now. That is Bucko, the pirate that leads the ship here in Los Angeles. And you're right, Shaylin Dorham. I like that matchup all day against Cynthia Schmidt. If I'm Los Angeles, just the pure speed alone. I, it looked like Dorham thought she would have help by the safety, but that was straight man coverage. When Schmidt went by, there was nobody there, and Dorham stopped. Salerno from the shotgun. Another extra point attempt, really sloppy. It looked like they were setting up the screen to Borso. Never developed. Jackie Good, she blew that play up. She read that screen. There was nothing there. Salerno had nowhere to throw it. Great play by Good. I'm not sure why Los Angeles is going for two every time. That is potentially three lost points. I realize you're up 18 to nothing early in this one, but you got to come away with some points after those scores. That's a great point, especially the way Carmen Borso is running the football. She hasn't been stopped, and they're trying to throw it for extra points. Alex Drake and Omaha taking over again, at least this time they're starting at the 10-yard line. Break under center, Shalin Durham in the backfield. That is an inside handoff, Raina Halliburn. Halliburn getting to the outside, but nearly decapitated by Megan Hansen. Great block by Sarah Robinson. Watch this, she cuts up, she makes a great run. Good solid play on first down for Omaha. Let's see if they can follow this up. Seven yards, they haven't had a play like that all game. It's good to see some production from this offense. A little deception. They had to come inside that little trap block. It looked good. That is Holliber in motion again. She will get the rock. That is Jamie Lundberg, actually. Oh, get the fuck out of here, bitch! Agam Chichindu, as you could tell, mic'd up tonight and doing a little color commentary. Number six can flat out play football. She stood up the wide receiver. Had no That receiver had no block on her. Throw her down, shed her, and then for three yards, got the running back in the backfield, Agam Chichindu. All the attention on Agam Chichindu, but stopped the presses. That was a first down for this offense, the first of the first quarter. Another inside handoff, Shalin Durham. Good positive gain there, five yards. That should bring us to the end of the first quarter. Agam Chichindu in Los Angeles starting to assert itself. Hey, get over here. Why did we get burnt deep on that last one? What happened? Why did we get burnt deep on that last one that she dropped? I don't know. Who was back there? Okay, look. 
go into a check roll right away. That way we still have three knees back there. I don't see them sweeping. I don't see them sweeping without anything on the other side. So go go into a check three. Come on, check roll, I mean. That is defensive coordinator and head coach Tui Soinoa. Not happy with his defensive secondary, but his team on top, 18 to nothing. He saw that arm on Drake, and he changed his philosophy now. He's going with a 3D coverage that they can't get on top. Another keeper by Drake getting to the outside. That'll be a gain of seven. Wow, the L.A. coaching staff, they have to treat her with kid gloves. I mean, she gave up seven yards. Hullo Ball had a great block on her. She should not say a word, and she's talking trash after letting that run get seven yards. This Omaha offense finally mounting a drive here. This is the fourth play, and they've accrued over 30 yards. From the shotgun down the field, no chance there. Pass intended for Jamie Lundberg, broken up by Lily Granston. Drake got real lucky there. That ball should have been picked off. She threw right in the heart of that two deep coverage. Should have been picked off by L.A. We do have another penalty here. Personal foul. A roughing the passer on Najah Christmas. That'll give new life to this offense. They're taking shots at quarterback Drake. She got rid of the football, but they smashed her again all night long. She's taking taking late shots. She's going to be one big bruise tomorrow. Those rushers are coming off the edge, and they're getting the Drake early. That time they got to her a little late. A first and goal ball at the eight-yard line. Hand off to Shalin Durham, and Durham just backing her way down for about two yards. This is exactly what Omaha needs. A slow drive working their way down the field. They're inside the 10. They're down 18-0. They need points now bad. I like the power running of Shalin Durham, but not a lot of skill with it. She literally just backed up into the defense. A second and goal again to Durham, and Durham making me eat my words as she eats a little plastic along that back wall. Lily Granston really getting after it early. There's no doubt L.A. is trying to intimidate Omaha. Every play, they're throwing punches. This Omaha roster, although they brought back some veterans like Shalin Durham there, they're still relatively a younger team. So Los Angeles trying to get inside their head a bit. That's their game. That was their game plan. They were going to attack the quarterback, try to get in their head. But right now, Omaha's driving the football. Drake has his team believing in himself. A great surge up front thus far. We'll see if Omaha stays with that run game. A third and goal from the five yard line. This is another keeper by Drake and look at Lily Granston. Granston's just an animal. She is an animal, but that set right there, a power eye set with no receivers, what does that do? The safeties come up. Then they're not worried about the pass. She had no blocking out there. And we've got some pushing and shoving. That's Jacqueline Good cornered by four Los Angeles players, Danielle Hawkins mainly. This could be another unsportsmanlike call on Los Angeles. Jeremy Hewick, our head referee, very busy here in the first half. Early indication is that this is on Los Angeles. Jeremy Hewick said number 18, Cynthia Schmidt. Obviously, Schmidt does not play defense. I think he may have been referring to Agam Chichindu. This is when it gets to a point, it hurts the team. Coach tu Tui Suenoa, he's got to tell his team, you know what, if it costs us points, you got to stop that trash talking. That may happen here. A first and goal for Omaha. That looked like an early start for Jack Good. That was the two going at it on the previous play. Danielle Hawkins coming up and getting in the face of good. And good may still be rattled from that previous engagement where she was cornered by four Los Angeles players. I think you're right. She right now is shell-shocked because that team did attack her, and it actually worked. That track toss worked. She jumped way before the snap. Now they're moving backwards. 
A shotgun play. Takarangi meeting Drake in the backfield. That'll be a loss of three yards. I really have to question that offensive call by Dante Allen. You have a quarterback that's getting killed, taking shots, and you have her running the football. She's taking more shots. When Dorham's running the ball, it's okay right now. Give her the football or throw it. Drake had no opportunity there. When they are attempting to pass the ball, it seems like their protection set is just not right. It's not, and, there, and there's no imagination to their passing game right now. Drake from the shotgun, throwing to the left side, and absolutely blowing up. Jamie Lundberg in the open field. Get the fuck out of here, bitch! Get the fuck out of here, bitch! Don't come in my zone! Yet to meet Agam Chichindu. This really is a hospital ball. High across the middle. She's totally covered by three players. I'm surprised that wide receiver got up. I would not be throwing to number six aside, and if I was an offensive player, I would not want to go to that side. Right now, you go back to the, the huddle, and you go to the quarterback and say, do not throw footballs like that. That can cost a career right there. High coming across with a, a quarterback sitting there waiting for you. A third and goal ball backed up to the 10, and Drake mishandles the snap, and they keep going backwards. That'll be a loss of five. They had the ball at LA's five yard line going in. The offside penalty threw them off. Now they're going backwards. They have no momentum. That's a shame because they needed points bad. That could have been a huge difference maker. You get it in there and at least get on the board. Your whole psyche is different. 100%. You stop the bleeding. You got momentum. You got confidence. Now they're going backwards. It's going to go the other way. A fourth and goal. Ball backed up to the 20 yard line. What kind of play do you call here? You got to throw it in the end zone. You have to have a shot. They have decent receivers. They have a trip set. You got to throw it up in the end zone. Give them a chance. Drake will try to do just that. Good pocket protection. Lofting it up. No chance. That was double coverage by Lily Granston and Chelsea Hart. Temptation continue to roll. Back to second quarter action of LFL football night. The home team, Los Angeles Temptation, a big debut, up 18 to nothing. That has to be demoralizing for Omaha. You have the ball inside the five, going in against, against LA, a chance to get the momentum, and now here it is, 18 nothing. LA's got the ball back with Salerno throwing it. First and 10, ball at the 20. Salerno taking off with it and lowering the shoulder. Sarah Jane Thompson not impressed. That is the second great open field tackle on Salerno by number nine. Most coaches want their quarterback to slide when they're going to get hit, contact, not Ashley Salerno. She wants to punish defensive backs. A second down play. L.A. hurrying to the line, and Sherry Awaga in the open field. A shoelace tackle by Raina Holobar. Otherwise, number 15 would have been in the end zone. Wow, does L.A. have a lot of playmakers? Carrie Sherry Awaga, she breaks loose. I thought she was going to take it all the way in, but we didn't talk about her much in pregame, but she's as talented a tight end as anyone in the LFL. A 19-yard run. Definite various options with this running game. Nas Johnson is not even playing. They've had Carmen Borso have success, and that time Sherry Awaga. And this is a keeper, Salerno. Walking into the end zone. Another Los Angeles touchdown. That is money. She gave the uh, Johnny Menzel money sign. She now, nobody touched her. A trip set. Cynthia Schmidt, a stock block. All three receivers blocks their defensive backs out. She walks in the end zone. How about Bucko the Pirate? He's getting a workout from all the scoring in the first half. He is in a full lather right now. The extra point attempt, this time from the one. Quick dart and caught. That's Kiana Takarangi, the Aussie transplant, helping Los Angeles extend their lead to 26 to nothing. Takarangi, she's got great hands right there, getting in the offensive action. She was covered, but she used her hand, her catch radius, reached out and pulled it in. This Omaha defense has got to be tired. They've been out on this field most of the first half. 
If that offense would have got into the end zone for Omaha right now, it would have been 18 to six or eight, a whole different ball game. But instead, LA back in the end zone, up 26 to nothing. Alex Straight getting really beat up here in the first half. We'll see if they if you keep falling behind like this. You're down 26 to nothing. The run game is not going to be an option any longer. You're 100% right. You have a quarterback who can throw it. Right now, the running game's not doing too well, and they have receivers who are getting open tonight. A first and 10 ball at the 10-yard line. That's handoff to Lundberg, and look at Danielle Harvey. She is fired up, was in on the penalty earlier, but really contributing to this defense. Former all-fantasy player at defensive end. Tonight, she started at strong safety. You can put her wherever you want but she shocks the blocker and explodes right through there to get to the running back. That was no gain. Jamie Lundberg really struggling in the run game. The only running back that's had some success for Omaha has been Shalyn Durham. You made a great point though. Right now you have to open it up a little bit. A second and 10. No, they're gonna keep it on the ground, Bobby Huco, and no success. Megan Hansen. Coming up from the corner position, or check that, from the middle linebacker position, that was Chelsea Hart. Hart, one of the bigger defenders at, from the corner position in the game. Chelsea Hart is playing like her idol, J.J. Watt. She loves contact. She came off the corner, made a great play, and I'm really impressed with Hanson. Coming in there, replacing Mo Gaxiola. She's playing great football so far. Hanson in a package deal with Lily Granston. Signed on with Los Angeles from Seattle last season. And they really are starting to get comfortable in this defense. That's a great combination. Two tough, greedy football players. Fun to watch them play defense. A third and 10 play. Drake stepping up in the pocket, getting to the outside, and again meeting Agam Chichindu. I let you go on that one, bitch. I let you go on that one, bitch. I let you go on that one, bitch. Chijindu, we talked about her earlier. She's bilingual. She loves profanity in English. That's the only two languages she can speak. <laughs> and I think Alex Drake will attest to that. I don't know why they keep calling sweet plays to Agam Chichindu's side. Danielle Harvey in the Los Angeles defense taking control. Back to second quarter action. In a game, Los Angeles leading comfortably 26 to nothing. And this Omaha offense has another fourth down staring at it. Alex Drake, she's taking heat all night long. I don't know how she's going to do it, but she has to come up with a big play right now. From the shotgun looking down the field. Nobody there, double covered. There's just nobody open in the secondary. Great coverage by free safety Lily Granston. I don't know if... Drake is feeling the hits or whatever, but that is not a typical Alex Drake pass. Boulevard looked like she was going to separate and get open deep, but that was way short on a deep post pattern. This defense for Omaha, they've got to have some oxygen on that sideline because it's been tough. They've been out for one or two, three plays, and they're giving up the home run. They're giving up big plays because I believe they're just winded. They are winded. Ashley Salerno told me before the game they were going to throw deep early, but they don't even have a chance to throw deep because they had a short field offensively all night. From the shotgun, Salerno looking to the end zone, has a receiver, Sherry Awaga. A gain of 10 yards, great hands for a big girl like Sherry Awaga. Awaga is a classic tight end, but that is the old Ashley Salerno. Moving in the pocket a little bit, then throwing a dart for a big completion for LA. That completion setting up now a first and goal. Ball at the Omaha three yard line. That's Borso flanked to the left of Salerno. It will go to Borso. And that is the third touchdown of the night for the F-150. I do not know what Omaha's secondary is thinking. They came up and they start tackling Cynthia Schmidt like she had the football. And who runs right by her for a touchdown? Borso. Armin Borso, that is who I'd be keying on in that situation. That is her third score of the half. But you could see this defense just simply winded right now. Winded and tired. And she almost walked in the end zone again. Great blocking up front. They're on a roll right now. A two-point attempt for Los Angeles. This is a design keeper for Salerno. Nothing doing. That is one bit of game film that this defense has studied. 
Salerno's had no luck down around the goal line. He walked in off that trip set earlier in the game, but Hulabar made a great play stop, held up the defense, held up the wide receiver. If he had to cut back, there's nothing there. Good play by Omaha. 32 to nothing. Los Angeles now really extending its lead. This is starting to look like the old Omaha matchup. Right now, Omaha is looking terrible offensively and defense, not clicking in the passing game, the running game, or on defense. Alex Drake in this offense will get another opportunity here before the half. You can see a lot of confusion in that huddle, and everybody looking at their play cards very uncertain of the scheme. It's like a box boxing match. Alex Drake taking shot after shot. She might be punch drunk right now because she's not throwing the ball well. She doesn't look like the same old quarterback. Look at the pressure coming off the edge. That is intercepted. Megan Hansen just read that play and jumped the ball. And that's another Los Angeles touchdown. I love the way Hanson, she doesn't wait for chances. She takes them. She jumped that football, like you said, walked into the end zone. This is getting ugly. How about the play of number 17? And you could see her embracing Monique Gaxiola, the Hall of Famer that played her position and just retired this offseason. Wow, this is what great linebackers do. They lure the quarterback into thinking their receiver coming across the middle is open. At the last second, boom, they jump it. Perfect timing, great play by Hanson. Four points for Los Angeles. The extra point attempt, LA again going for the two-point conversion. Has not been very successful here. Salerno keeping it herself, and again, a great open field tackle. This time by Jacqueline Good. That is amazing. They're moving at will to get down to that point going in the end zone, but those two-point conversions, they're not getting close. If you're an Omaha Hart fan, this has got to be, for lack of a better term, disheartening. I mean, you had a team that beat the Pittsburgh Rebellion very easily, 32 to 6 at home. You thought they'd be more competitive here. Dante Allen, head coach, really thought they're going to be competitive. But in big games like this, you have to make the big play. Three big mistakes. Good jumping offside. First pass of the game, way behind the receiver. Holobar dropping the long ball. You have to make plays against a team like Los Angeles. A first and ten for this Omaha offense. Again, pressure off the edge, this time by Chelsea Hart. And Hart nearly getting to Alex Drake. That'll fall incomplete and set up a second and ten. Wow, she got to Drake, but after she threw the ball, I'm surprised that's on a penalty. Alex Drake does have the arm, as you mentioned, to get it down the field in this situation. The problem is they don't really have a home run threat on the outside. You're right. When you look at it on paper, they don't have the speed merchants like a Cynthia Schmidt, but their receivers are getting open. Jamie Lundberg has been the go-to receiver today. This one just thrown out of bounds. Drake getting a little nervous in the pocket. There was nobody within three yards of Alex Drake, but she shoved that into the stands. Again, that's a quarterback seeing ghosts. There's nobody there. Nobody was even close to her. She got scared, threw it in the stands. She could have waited for a receiver to get open, but she just threw it out. Drake was the high-profile free agent quarterback signing of the offseason. Coming over from the New England Liberty, but looking at this defense now that's led by Lily Granston. I don't think I've ever seen him attack this way and be this athletic, this Los Angeles defense. That was the game plan. In fact, when I talked to defensive coach Richie Jacobs, he said they're going to try to hit Drake like a punching bag. And so far, it's working. Drake trying to buy time. And again, Chelsea Hart meeting her. Those two have been at it all first half. That'll be a loss of a yard. I don't think I've seen a quarterback in recent years in the LFL take as many shots in one half like Alex Drake has tonight. It's starting to pile up. You can see she is in no hurry to get this next playoff. With under a minute remaining, they just want to get back into the locker room and regroup. She's limping a little bit right now, but they have her out of her game plan. Right now, she lacks the confidence she had before this game started. If they're not careful here, there's enough time on this clock that if they don't get a first down, they could turn it over to Los Angeles. A fourth and 11. Look at Chelsea Hart from the corner. They just do not have an answer for those blitzing corners. 
and they're taking shots. I'm surprised that's not a penalty again. She threw it away. Again, nobody was out there. Not a good play by her on fourth down, but she got plowed after she threw it. Look how good this L.A. defense is feeling about itself. The scheme that head coach, Dewey Soinoa, also the defensive coordinator for Los Angeles, has got Alex Drake looking like that through one half of football. That's twice on fourth down. He threw the ball up into the crowd, not even giving her receivers a shot. Bad plays by Drake, but they're affecting her play with those hits. Los Angeles with another opportunity here. Not that they necessarily need it up big in this game for 20 minutes of play. Salerno remains in the ball game from the shotgun. Looking to the end zone, had a receiver and dropped by Kiara Patterson. Otherwise, she would have walked into the end zone. I don't know how Patterson dropped this. What a throw by Salerno outside the corner before the safety come over. She should have had that for six points for L.A. You want to talk about getting it into a small space, and Patterson just choked on the goal line. I think she heard footsteps, that safety coming in, but she could have caught that ball and just fell backwards in the end zone. A second and goal. This will be the final play of the half. Hand off to Borceau. Sarah Jane Thompson on the tackle. If there's been one bright spot, it's been the play of Thompson. Thompson having an outstanding, you're right, the only player for Omaha to have an outstanding first half. Great play right there on Borceau. And why is there no urgency with this offense? That will run out the clock. They would have another opportunity here. And that's going to do it for us through one half of football in Ontario, California. We are headed into halftime. Los Angeles up comfortably, 38 to nothing. Hey, ladies. That's just over with. Are you fucking telling me that team is 38 fucking points better than us? Oh, no. Is that is that what we're telling you right now? No. no. We're playing with zero energy, zero fucking pride. We're just letting them push us around. Are they better than us? No. Oh, no. Would it fucking act like it? Welcome back inside the booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco here at halftime. Through 20 minutes of play, Bob, it has been all Los Angeles up 38 to nothing, looking strong on both sides of the ball. And for Omaha, really struggling, especially that offense. That's the story of the first half, the inept offense of Omaha. No creativity at all. Dante Allen, the head coach and offensive coordinator, is not trying to deceive L.A. at all, trying to go one-on-one -on -one against them. They don't have the talent to do that. They have to come up with something to offset that L.A. defense in the second half. Now let's talk about their quarterback, Omaha, Alex Drake. She gets a lot of headlines, very held in the offseason, big signing for this team. The production has simply not been there. And through 20 minutes of play, she's only one of 12, and she threw that interception right before the half. Not accurate at all. Her first pass of the night, she was way off. She's got the skills, a strong arm, but not showing it tonight. Now, it's not all on her. She's getting zero protection by the offensive line. She's getting crushed. They have to protect her in the second half. Now, some of that scoring did not, none of the scoring came from Omaha. It all came from Los Angeles. Let's take a look at it. Mainly on the ground with the F-150, Carmen Borso on touchdown runs of 9, 17, and 3 yards. And then Salerno's return to the lineup accounted for a pair of scores. One on the ground here with Salerno taking it in herself. Then connecting with number 18 for 18 yards, Cynthia Schmidt. And right before the half, we talked about it, Megan Hansen picking off Alex Drake and taking it to the house. That brings us to our halftime score of 38 to nothing. Now, Bob, can Omaha rally in this thing? 38 points in the LFL, believe it or not, is not a lot. They have to get on a roll here in the second half. They are totally missing their running back, Nikki Bernhardt, who's out tonight. It's all on Alex Drake, but she needs protection, and the head coach, Dante Allen, has to be creative with that offense. Omaha definitely has its work cut out for itself. 20 minutes of football remain. The second half kickoff is next. Back for the final 20 minutes of football. The Los Angeles temptation up very comfortably, 38 to nothing. And if you're the Omaha heart, Bobby Huco, what do you do in the final 20 minutes of play here? Well, there's only 20 minutes. We've seen it before in the LFL. You can score quickly, but to get it done, you have to get it done through the air. And they have a quarterback, Drake, that can throw it around the field. She's not playing that great so far, but she can do it. That's what you have to do. Put the ball in the air. Then Nachka Cloud back deep to receive for Los Angeles. 
And Kayla Wegman will do the honors for Omaha. As we get underway here in the second half, a nice high kick, a little short. Bod will field it at about the 10 yard line and has some open green grass ahead of her. A great open field tackle by Sherry Awaga. We'll make that a block. And Cloud getting all the way out to the Omaha 18 yard line. Running back coach Ricky Jacobs, he could not speak highly enough about Cloud. She's a speed merchant, she's a rookie. He said, watch out for her. She almost took that coast to coast. That's Ashley Salerno's numbers. You could see not a lot of numbers there through the air. She frankly didn't need it. Los Angeles didn't need it. They got it done on the ground in the first half. Now that's scary. That tells you how explosive this offense is. They have arguably the best quarterback ever playing right there, Ashley Salerno. And she threw the ball four times in the first half. A Y under handoff, Kiana Takarangi. The Aussie gaining 11 yards, and again, Los Angeles getting it done on the ground. They are loaded at tight end with Awaga and Takarangi, who can both run the ball. They're both studs. They can catch the ball. There's all kind of offensive weapons on this L.A. side of the ball. And don't forget Danielle Harvey. She plays some tight end as well. Very physical up front. And Agam Chichindu. She plays running back. Anybody can play offense on this team. A first and goal after that Takarangi 11-yard run. This is kind of a crossbuck handoff. Carmen Borso breaking through arm tackles and into the end zone. That is the fourth rushing touchdown of this game for the F-150. Borso is the story of the evening. She's playing OMG football. What a kickout block by Takarangi to open Borso up. LA back on the board. Now, Los Angeles, the only thing they've struggled with tonight is the extra point conversion. It appears they're going to go for one here from the one-yard line. Receivers flank to the left side. Shotgun handoff, almost a direct snap to Carmen Borso. Cannot get to the goal line. That'll keep our score 44 to nothing, Los Angeles. Not sure about that call. Jackie Good, nobody blocked her. She made a great open field tackle, but she's limping off the field, which is another great player for Omaha. Looks hurt. Omaha just looks a little shell-shocked right now. I don't think they expected to be down this big in Los Angeles, especially following the performance they had at home against Pittsburgh. Well, that's it. They scored over 30 points against Pittsburgh. Dante Allen thought he had this team ready to play, and, and they're not. Right now, down 44 to nothing. And that's a new quarterback under center, Lindsey Howell. Howell did start the entire 2016 season. I'm not sure if this is a benching or there's something else at play, potentially an injury with Alex Drake. I don't think that's a benching because the backup quarterback, Howell, received like no snaps in practice this week. Something had to happen. That was a three-yard carry by Shalin Durham. We are now getting a report from the sideline. Apparently, Alex Drake is in per, uh, concussion protocol, so she will be out the remainder of the game. That is a big blow to an offense that's already struggling to score points. Wow, that could be a fatal blow because Hal doesn't get that much practice. The only shot I thought Omaha had had was the arm of Alex Drake, and she's out now for the rest of the game. Look at Lily Granston come up from that safety position and lay the lumber on Shalin Durham. They're not scared of Hal's arm. I'm, su I'm surprised the safeties are playing that deep. They'll be right in the box because Hal last year, she showed she doesn't have a great arm. Right now, she's probably just trying to get a snap. She does look a little uncertain in the pocket, and you could see her staring down at the ground, not even looking up at the defense. I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback do that. A third and two. I was going to call that a misdirection, but that was just pure confusion. That's going to get you killed with this defense. I know, I did. Tackle with Najon Christmas. This is one. That's one. That's one. That's one. That's one. 42. Just what we spoke about, a new quarterback. She's not used to it in there. She needs help from the veterans. Dorm trying to help her out. But right now, like we mentioned, she's not looking at any defense. She just wants to know where the hole is, where do I hand the ball off. And, and with that attitude, there's no way they're going to catch up. Now again under center, a fourth and two. And poorly handled snap. Now just panicked in the backfield. I don't know. I think I could find somebody that could have a little more success. 
She looks confused, intimidated. Again, Shalyn Durham laying into the ear of Lindsey Howell. This is a worst case scenario for head coach Dante Allen. Without his, his star player out, the quarterback Alex Drake, you have Howell in there, all confused right now. This is not a good situation at all for Omaha. And what's worse, Ashley Salerno in this high-powered offense going back to work here. Armin Borso coming off four scores already. You got to factor with the game situation. They're going to keep it on the ground with Borso. A first and ten. There they go again, showing me up to the end zone. Nobody there. Cynthia Schmidt and Salerno not on the same page, and now we've got fists flying. These two teams are not liking one another. That is Chelsea Hoffman of Omaha. It appears she was going after Salerno. She took a shot at the quarterback, Salerno, and the entire offensive line got in her face and said, not in our place tonight. That's a cheap shot on her part. She didn't get called for it. Salerno went right back after her. You know Salerno, the fighter, but her, the offensive line got between them. Ashley Salerno not one to back up from contact. Just asked Chicago's Allie Alberts. Salerno, one of the few quarterbacks that love to engage. Now looking down the field, great crossing pattern. And that looks to be complete to Delaney Hall. What an extended reach catch by Hall. Delaney Hall, part of the combination they have at wide receiver with Cynthia, Cynthia Schmidt. She has great hand, goes low for the ball. Great catch right there. I don't know if you noticed, she dyed her hair purple so Salerno would be able to see her not throw the ball at Schmidt all the time. Delaney Hall, the Palm Desert, California native, is someone that came into the Los Angeles system last year as a free safety, excelled at the position, but they love her playmaking ability on the offensive side of the ball. This team is stacked. Delaney Hall can play great at safety and wide receiver. Harmon Borso getting upended that time by Jacqueline Good. That'll be enough for a first down. The middle linebacker, Jackie Good, she plays with her heart every play, every game. We haven't spoke about her tonight, obviously, because of the 44 to nothing score. But she's a player, and she plays every game 100%. A first and goal after that Borso run. And number 10 remains in the ball game. Ashley Salerno, no hurry to get the snap underway. With the scoreboard reading what it is. And that's a handoff to Borso, breaking through arm tackles and into the end zone again. If I'm the Omaha defense, I'm having those nightmares. Number 10 breaking free in the secondary. Wow, Omaha definitely is going to need a bigger boat. Look at this running through tackles, a bad tackle. She reaches for the goal line, but again, up front, Takarangi with an outstanding kickout block to open her up for that touchdown. How about Sarah Jane Thompson going on a ride on the F-150 for a good five yards? That's exactly what that was. What a ride. What a night for, for so. Now the extra point attempt. Ball at the one. L.A. really struggling here on the extra point conversion. This time going back to Borso and Borso walking into the end zone. That will extend L.A.'s lead to 51 to nothing. The wheels are coming off of Omaha, 51 to nothing. Hey, make sure you turn the right way. It's a very simple play. You know 41, 42, it's very simple. You can't run the plays if you don't know them. I know you know them, we went through them. Okay, like I said, you gotta get focused, okay? You gotta get focused. Head coach Dante Allen not liking the start Lindsey Howell has had as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Third quarter action, Los Angeles up 51 to nothing. Your thoughts on coach uh, Dante Allen talking to his starting quarterback here? He was right on. As a backup quarterback, it's up to Lindsey Howell to be ready. It's not up to the coaches. A backup quarterback, no matter what it takes, has to be ready to play when she is called. That was a reverse. It looked like it was intended with Jamie Lundberg, but she collided with Shalyn Durham. And Naja Christmas, very opportunistic. That'll be a loss of a yard. Loss of this whole fucking game. Good shit, Naja. And hey, Rev, can you watch the, the hit? She's on the ground on her back if she kicked her yet. Please, thank you. 
That is the nicest I've ever heard Aga Chichindu. Actually, he's asking the rest very nicely. Just watch. She's been kicking me. Very diplomatic of number six. Usually she likes to use a little more colorful language, but she used the word please. Wow, when she's looking for some yardage, she says please and very nice. I'm surprised she didn't give him a kiss. A second and 11 handoff. Shalyn Durham. I don't know how many times we've seen Lily Granston come up and the two of them colliding the way they are. Right now, Dante Allen, what he has to do because of that, any offensive coordinator would see that, how quickly the safeties are coming up. You do a play action pass, you go right over the top of them. I don't care if it's your backup quarterback or not, if you can throw decent enough, you got to keep them away from the offensive line. I was going to say, I don't think Lindsey Howell has any hope in completing anything down the field. That's why they're keeping it on the ground here with Durham. And Durham just a battering ball, gaining four yards. That'll set up a fourth and two. If there is a bright spot on this offense of Omaha, it is Durham. He's been pounding that line, getting hit, taking hits, getting positive yardage. There's no passing game, absolutely zero passing game. They're keyed on Durham, and she's still getting positive yards. That front line of Omaha, much like they did against Pittsburgh, has kind of come on here in the second half being a little more physical with LA's defense. Another handoff, this time to Jamie Lundberg. That will not be enough for a first down. That was a fourth and two play. And again, Los Angeles taking over on downs. I don't get it. The only person getting positive yards is Dorham. He's getting four yards, five yards. So on fourth and two, they give it to Lundberg and she tries to run outside the defensive end. It, it just doesn't work. And you could see Monique Gaxiola there. Megan Hansen, her protege. As we talked about it, Mo Gaxiola hung up the cleats this offseason after eight years in the league, the longest tenured athlete to ever play with the LFL. That is a quick screen and a great tackle, kind of a clothesline tackle by Chelsea Hoffman. Yara Patterson, she started a couple games last year for L.A. She's a backup now that Salerno's back, but she has a gun. All she needs is some time, and she's a solid backup quarterback. Good to see her in the game. So Salerno gets pulled with a little over two minutes remaining, and this is a toss left play to Carmen Borso, and just getting out of bounds, he'll have it down to the three-yard line. You could see Ashley Salerno talking to Chelsea Hart, telling her, I'm not playing because Omaha's playing kind of dirty out there. They're down by 51. They're starting to throw some punches. They don't want their quarterback hurt. That's why Salerno's out of the game. Also, Chelsea Hart. A first and goal ball at the three-yard line. Kiara Patterson in at quarterback. L.A. starting to open up their bench a bit, but they're going to keep Carmen Borso chugging away. We do have a penalty. Or so did land in the end zone, but this could be a no play penalty. You can see who wants it more. I know that's being called back, but Borso right there, she ran through three Omaha defenders, had a great shot on her. She's still got in the end zone. I know it's coming back, but here it is late in the game. You're up 51 to nothing, and she plays that kind of rugged football. I love Carmen Borso. So it will remain first and goal. Ball backed up to about the eight-yard line for Los Angeles. And if you look inside that huddle, you see a lot of the bench now making out onto the field. We'll see how deep they are in Los Angeles. Kiara Patterson, she could start for a lot of teams in the LFL. She is a rock-solid quarterback. That's Delaney Hall in motion. And Patterson on a keeper to the right side. Look at the speed on Patterson. That was a gain of about four yards, setting up a second and goal. She is a former track star. You can see that speed at quarterback. That's why last year she started a wide receiver. Coach Tui Suanoa, he doesn't know where to play her because she can play a lot of positions. A lot of teams would love her as a starting quarterback. They also flanked her at receiver last year. She has, like you said, she has the speed to get down the field. Usually better hands. She did drop that touchdown in the first half but usually a very sure-handed wide receiver for Los Angeles. Another Wildcat type set with Patterson, and I'm not sure she got in. It looks like she is about a yard short, a half yard short. 
So the Omaha defense not ready to give up just yet. She's a handful. They had her back by the four yard line and she almost stretched out and put it in the end zone. We are headed to break. Los Angeles up big. Back to fourth quarter action of LFL football night. Ashley Salerno in this Los Angeles temptation very comfortably on top, 51 to nothing. After a year off, it was a great night for Ashley Salerno. Not great numbers, they didn't have to throw it that much, but just solid football. Kiara Patterson remaining in at quarterback on a third and goal play. Hand off again to the F-150. Just burling her way through three Omaha defenders in route to her fifth touchdown of the night. This is a tired Omaha defense. Jackie Good, untouched in the backfield, had a chance one-on-one -on -one against Corso, and just flat out missed her. What a confidence booster this has to be for this LA team. They saw Seattle beat Austin in the Western Conference in the season opener. And you know that's really their measuring stick. How are they gonna match up against the other Western powerhouse, the Seattle Mist? Now that's going to be fun to watch. You have Ashley Salerno against KK Matheny, C.D. Schnorr against Carmen Borso. Fun football. A lot of great matchups rest ahead here for the season. But tonight, again, it's been all Los Angeles. Kiara Patterson coming off the bench and guiding this offense down the field on a five-play, 18-yard drive, putting L.A. up 58 to nothing. Straight out of Compton. Patterson's a beast at quarterback. She's tough to bring down. Now Lindsey Howell returning to the game as quarterback for Omaha. You got to try to maybe get out of here with nine, a little over nine minutes remaining. Just healthy because the season is still there for you in the Eastern Conference if you're Omaha because they were 1 0 coming into tonight. They'll leave tonight, obviously, 1 1, but there's still a lot of football ahead for this team. That's a great point. You got to throw this game away. They are still in the playoff picture. Hopefully their quarterback Drake is not seriously injured and she'll be back in a couple weeks till their next game. They got to keep their head high. Shotgun snap. A pass to Sarah Jane Thompson. And Thompson breaking through arm tackles in the open field and into the end zone. She may have lost her shorts, but touchdown Omaha. Wow, where's that been all night? Sarah Thompson, Sarah Jane Thompson. Look at, I mean, like shot out of a cannon. Wow, we've been waiting for that all night. So there was a penalty, luckily for Omaha, that was on Los Angeles. So the Sarah Jane Thompson 40 yard touchdown, most of it after the catch will stand. She looked like she was possessed on that play. She broke three tackles. And then at the very end, they grab for her pants. Looked like a copper tone commercial, but she walks in the end zone. Great play. That's what they needed, a spark to go into their next game. I think the mental mindset, look, you're not going to score 52 points in nine minutes, but to get into the end zone and not be blanked tonight by this Los Angeles team, that's got to mean something. Oh, totally. Even for the quarterback, for Lindsey Howell, she stayed in the pocket, delivered a strike right on the money, and then she broke three tackles for a touchdown. That's got to be a, a momentum booster. That's the first time I've seen her grin. Not exactly smile, but grin. That's going to give her a little confidence if Omaha is going to need her. Why are you making changes? Fourth quarter. Let everybody play. We're fine. Coach Selena was saying, hey, listen, back off, Agam Chichindu. We're going to open up the bench here and give some of these players an opportunity to play. You notice out of all the players on L.A., it's Agam Chichindu getting right in Coach Suya Noah's face. Chichindu wanting every snap, and that's Kiara Patterson, one of those bench players, not playing like one. That was a 22-yard carry. And this is nothing against Lindsey Howe. She got thrown in the game. She didn't know she was going to play. But look at the difference in the backup quarterbacks how they're playing. Kiara Patterson, she looks like she's competing for a starting job. She wants to score every play. She's not making any mistakes in there, looking really good. Patterson, a naturally gifted athlete. We talked about her earlier. Hails from Compton, California. This is now her third season with the LA Temptation. Last year when Jane Caldwell was quarterback, 
she was a wide receiver, but she really wanted to learn how to play quarterback, and she's doing great. Now Patterson moving under center. Makes the handoff looking to the right side of the end zone. Nobody there buying time and nearly complete to Sherry Awaga. Great defensive play there by Kelsey Prasik. Defensive coordinator coach good. He told me that Prasik's a raw athlete out there. You can see she broke on the ball. All she needs is time in the game. Sherry Awaga dropping that pass. One thing Los Angeles will see on, on their game film is the failures down on the extra point conversion, and they've had a couple drop balls here. I think that's the biggest right there, the extra points. They had no problem getting in the end zone, but against Seattle, that's not going to work. We are critiquing a team that's up 58-6. to six. Well noted. This is Kiara Patterson rolling right, buying time, throwing to the end zone. Touchdown, Kiana Takarangi. Was that Aaron Rodgers? She's making velocity shots all over the field. She was on the far right past the hash on the right side of the right, rolling out across her body on the money to Takarangi. What kind of arm strength was that? That was incredible. We are seeing the athleticism of number one on full display here. Maybe making Ashley, Ashley Salerno a little nervous here. I don't know if Salerno's nervous, but I'll tell you who's jealous is Dante Allen. He saw that pass with his offense. Wow, just imagine. This will be a one-point attempt. Yara Patterson directing traffic. Gonna keep it herself. Now options out to Carmen Borso. That was a little dangerous toss, but Carmen Borso able to come down with it and extending Los Angeles' lead to 65-6. to six. L.A. offensive coordinator Jeff Loud, he's got to be loving this. His backup quarterback coming in the second half and playing flawless football. Now let's see if Lindsey Howell can once again answer. On the previous possession, she managed to complete a 40-yard touchdown pass to Sarah Jane Thompson. This time, no luck. A quarterback keeper tackled by Rachel Hayes. The one thing, what do you think about Jeff Loud, the offensive coordinator? He takes he takes the quarterback, Slarno out, keeping her healthy, but why is he leaving Borso in the game? You know, that's a tough question because you, you compound that with the fact that Borso is a very physical running back. So she takes a lot of contact in the midst of the game. I would 100% pull her from this lineup. 65 to 6 right now. She's played an unbelievable game, but you don't want her nicked up. The tougher games are coming up in the season schedule. Lindsey Howe now facing a second and eight. Most of that LA defense still on the field. Going down though, I'm not sure what they were doing there. Her and Marissa Riley Mitchell not on the same page. There's Alex Drake right there, a frustrated Alex Drake. Thank God she's out there. I like her watching the game. She's not in the training room. She looks like she's going to be okay the next game. Her stats were not good tonight, not a good game, but it's good to see her up and about. Drake, as we said earlier, is under the league concussion protocol. So later this week, they will assess how long number 16 will be out of the lineup. Since Hal entered the game early in the third quarter here, it looks like she gained a lot of confidence. In the shotgun, looking down the field, now checking down. That looked to be complete for a second and dropped by Jamie Lundberg. How stayed in the pocket, was taking serious heat, but unlike Drake, she delivered a strike, just dropped. I tell you what, what I don't like seeing, a lot of these Omaha players, including Shalyn Durham, we saw that in the third quarter, and again, Jamie Lundberg there, showing up their quarterback a little bit. They're coming back, yelling at her visibly upset with him. I don't think that's the way you encourage the quarterback. You gotta give her some confidence. Not at all, and there's no way that Hal thought she'd be in the game with a stud quarterback in front of her. Drake, nobody would thought she'd get hurt. She was out the whole second half. A fourth and eight ball remains at about the 12-yard line. They've got to convert here complete. But that'll be well short of the sticks. A six-yard completion. Megan Hansen on the tackle. Another solid throw and play by Howe. They didn't get the first down, but again, she stayed in the pocket and delivered a strike. There's Lundberg. 
Again, talking to Hal, that's more constructive. Go over to your quarterback. Don't shore up. Don't wail your arms. Don't yell at her. Take her to the bench and talk to her reason. Absolutely. It's a tough situation she was thrown into. Help her out. Don't bring her down. Patterson now looking over at that L.A. bench. Looks like they're missing someone from the lineup. This is what happens when you clean out the bench. A lot of people out there that normally wouldn't see a lot of PT. I liked what Coach Tuanoa's doing. Up in Seattle, sometimes Chris Michelson keeps his starters in the entire game. Right now, Coach Tui Suwano is getting all his players in. A first and 10 handoff, Carmen Borso. Borso continuing to add to her stat line. That was a carry for nine yards. We haven't spoken much about the new center for LA, Rose Saint. She's having a solid game inside right there. Open up that hole for Borso. They had Megan Hansen at the center position last year. And obviously, they needed her now at middle linebacker, and that's paid off dividends for them. Now they've got a rookie in Rose Sains at center. Megan Hansen, I cannot believe how well she played tonight. Now a handoff to Melissa Miles, another bench player. Great open field tackle by Ariane Williams. Now we're seeing some of the youth of this franchise that's been around since 2009. You're starting to see some of the older players, the Chelsea Hearts, Agam Chichindu, Ashley Salerno. They obviously already lost Monique Yaxiola. This is one of the older teams in the league, so they're going to need some of this young talent like a Melissa Miles. That's a great point. Wide receiver coach Rory Derry, he spoke very highly of Miles. She's an up-and-comer. They keep grooming new receivers. She's 5'9", tall and lanky, just like Cynthia Schmidt. You know, if you were a college student right now and you happen to be of drinking age and you were playing a drinking game with your buddies as to how many times Carmen Borso would score tonight, you'd be drunk. You'd be a little buzzed. Oh, my gosh. This is unbelievable. This might be a league record. And how about him? He probably lost 10 pounds running around the field. Bucko the Pirate and Carmen Borso are having quite the night. Speaking of beer, I've never seen a beer can like I've seen in the second half with this temptation crowd, they loved it. Yeah, in case you guys are wondering, a fun thing goes on in the LFL. Right around the fourth quarter, they do something called the beer cam. So everybody in attendance that's holding a beer gets to chug it. Bobby and I did not get a chance to partake. We did not. We wish we did, but I'll tell you one thing. I don't think Roger Goodell would ever have a beer cam. That was a lot of fun. Harmon Borso taking a lot of punishment. In route to the end zone, extending Los Angeles' lead to 72 to 6. Great block by Kiara Patterson. Watch this on good. Puts her on her back. And then Borso does the rest, just powering for points. Los Angeles, you got to factor at this point that you're not going to see Carmen Borso anymore. There's still a lot of football left here in the fourth quarter. But as we said earlier, They've got to pull her from this game. The, the punishment she's taking, you saw Shalyn Durham take a shot to the head of Carmen Borso on that extra point. The time has come. You've got to pull number 10. Jeff Loud, he's a great offensive coordinator, but right now I just don't get it. It's a veteran. It's not like a rookie you're trying to get some more action with. Borso is a proven veteran. Took a lot of hits tonight. you got to get her out of the game. Lindsey Howell remains in the game at quarterback. Omaha now a first and 10 from the 10-yard line. Back to throw over the middle, intercepted. That is Delaney Hall taking it to the house. The Palm Desert native coming through for Los Angeles. Wow, you gotta love that purple hair. She's gotta be a Prince fan, but what a play. She played single high safety as well as anybody. She jumped that ball. Speaking of the beer cam, it's going to be a bit of a buzzkill. Najah Christmas being called for the holding. That'll negate the touchdown by Delaney Hall, but the interception stands. Great play by Hall. It was a phantom call. I didn't really see much there, but they called it. But let's get back to the play that Hall made. She jumped that ball and showed why she's an outstanding free safety. Harmon Borso remaining in the game and picking up a very tough five yards. Again, I question why she's in the game, but as long as she's playing, she's going to give a million percent, gets another five yards. This should take us down to the two-minute warning. That's two minutes too long if you're an Omaha Hard fan. 
Temptation Nation controlling the night. Back for the final two minutes. And if you're wondering who's getting game MVP honors, it's Megan Hansen and Carmen Borso enjoying a beer. Both of them outstanding games. Now, I hope the OC doesn't put her back in the game after drinking a beer, but what a game for Borso. Great performances by a pair of the younger players on this roster. Carmen Borso in her fourth season and Megan Hansen only in her third season. That was one of the big questions before the game. Who would fill the spot of Mo Gaxiola? Can Hanson do it? Well, she showed it tonight. She can. And keep in mind, we alluded to it in the first half. Nas Johnson, the all-fantasy running back for Los Angeles, is not even in the lineup. So that's going to be added firepower when she returns. Can you imagine that backfield with Nas Johnson, one of the fastest players, best running backs in the LFL, teaming up with Borso for a one-two combination? Wow. And they had that last year, but Borso was not playing at this level. This is something whole, this is something brand new that the Western Conference has got to prepare for. That was another four-yard carry by Borso, fresh off a 12-ounce beer. She's out there running the football. For some reason, Coach Loud wants to keep her in the football game. I'm kind of shocked, especially after the beer. Patterson and company now under two minutes remaining. A lot of great game film. If you're a Los Angeles coach on the other side, if you're part of this Omaha franchise, like you said earlier, you may want to just burn this game film. That's Kiara Patterson running past the defense and into the end zone. Another touchdown for the silver and black. It's just a mismatch. Danielle Snyder, number five, she broke through free one-on-one, -on -one, and Patterson broke her ankle and walked into the end zone. Bucko, the Pirate, loving this night. This whole atmosphere is something unique. This franchise used to play at the L.A. Coliseum. While that's a great historic venue, the, the fans were kind of away from the action. Here at Citizens Business Bank Arena, much like most of the LFL arenas, they are on top of it. So the energy level is at a whole different point. And they're into this team, 78 to 6 right now, and the fans are still here. They're waiting till the final buzzer. Patterson good on the extra point. That'll extend Los Angeles' lead to 79 to 6. We've seen a couple blowouts this season, certainly the nightmare in Denver when Chicago whooped on the Denver Dream 93 to 6. I don't think this is as bad as that. Obviously, the score isn't. But Omaha is a far better team than what that scoreboard is indicating right now. You are correct. They're not that far off. There's a reason that L.A. has three championship banners hanging right above us right now. They're going to compete for a championship, but Omaha's going to throw this game away. Their quarterback hopefully is going to be back, and they win some ball game. They do have a matchup against the Pittsburgh Rebellion. They did beat 32-6 to on June 10th. You can't throw the season away. They're only 1-1. One and one. Who knows? Somebody could stumble. They might slip into the playoffs if they get their game back. The clock continues to run. We are under 40 seconds. Howell going to take off with it. And that is just a meeting of the Los Angeles defense, regardless of the score. They're still pursuing like a pack of wild dogs. They don't want this game to end. They are having fun. I know it's 79-6 to six right now, but they want this game to keep going. Los Angeles has got kind of a tough matchup here on the road coming up. June 24th, they have to travel to Austin. And if you look back at the season opener, Austin did have Seattle on the ropes at least through one half of football. That is going to be a great game, but tonight all my questions were answered about Los Angeles. Salerno's back. Megan Hansen can fill where Mo Gaxiola was. And for Omaha, Coach Dante Allen, he's got to get a little more creative on the offense, but they're not that far away. L.A. winning in deciding fashion. Again, a final score of 79-6. to That will officially do it for us here in Ontario, California. The Los Angeles Temptation winning at 79-6. My partner, Bobby Huco. 
This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.